away you go. I very much would like to open the batting, Crabbers. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Might get a few straight bats because it's still the transfer window, but we'll have a go. <laughs> um, talk to me about Sander Berger. Obviously, that move has been confirmed. Mm -hmm. How big a loss is that? And is it an inevitable part of the situation the club's in at the moment? Uh, yeah, probably. Um, no, I can't speak highly enough of Sander. One as a player, obviously, I'd... I only had probably the first 10 days with him um, and then he picked up a, a little bit of an injury so didn't didn't spend too much time. But I mean, professionally and as, as a player, uh, everything I, I, I see of him from the outside confirmed it to me when I was in here really. So um, top player who obviously deserves to be playing in the Premier League. So we wish him all the best in, in that sense. And um, like I said, in my short space of time, nothing but... Um, real compliments in, ter in terms of him so um, yeah wish him all the best in his next venture really I, I use the word inevitable there football is business and economics a lot of the time isn't it yeah how much potential with a few having gone now is there for you to be reinvesting that I know you've already made a couple of signings but mm. can that continue well hopefully yeah I'm, I'm sure like at this present moment in time a, a few of few have gone and of course we had a we had a very big squad I think that was very clear and the dynamics of football like you suggest there's different dynamics to that um, so inevitably players will leave this football club for one reason or another um, and like always it, with the team behind us we'll, we'll look to see what we need to do in certain moments this you're in um you're in a position of a transfer window where anything can happen. You have to react accordingly from there, really. So we'll be prepared for that, and if need be, we'll we'll bring in who we need to bring in, really. Clearly, you don't want your better players, your biggest assets, to all leave the club. Mm. Is that a better position to be in? In the fact that there's interest in the players and there's an opportunity to make that squad smaller if you need to, than if you had thirty odd players and nobody wanted them. Uh, a bit of both really uh, like always you don't really want to have a big massive turnover while you understand and certainly in position I'm in you understand at this moment when a, when a team comes out of the Premier League and players desires of, of course as well come into that in terms of wanting to be here or wanting to be part of this journey and of course my stance has always been if that's not the case then it's better than, than players find different solutions for that um and, and on the flip side of that is if you, you obviously want your best talent and that gives you the best opportunity. But at that moment, the bigger clubs or certainly the clubs that want them talent you, it, it's there. So, um, yeah, like I said, we, we'll, we'll build and we'll work through through these moments. Players want to stay and we'll, we'll move on from there and, and build this squad to the best we see possible to obviously make us successful this year, really. I'll spare you the big list of names and transfer rumours as far mm. as outgoings are concerned. Is there anything currently in progress for departures? Um, there may be a couple of things that at this present moment in time, what could be what could be departing, yeah. Um, but like always, I won't really want to go into too much detail regarding that because that they're still not, not there and you'll be the first to hear when they do, but there's a possibility that that, that could happen. Um, and then incomings, uh, likewise, there may be there may be something happening at the present moment in time. Obviously, we've signed Bashir, um, which we're excited about, and, and maybe others on the way. Just on Bashir, what does he bring, <clears throat> perhaps, that you haven't already had or that can augment something you've already got? Well, I think he's a big talent. He's obviously had a... Uh, alone last year in the championship so he's obviously familiar with the league a, a really good age for us in that sense with huge potential and ability but one who we see that 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 is not one for development as in not being around it he's certainly one what's going to be in around our squad and feel that he's got the capabilities to push and and, and earn the right to play in this team really so um i think yeah he's a very very good sign in that in in that sense and probably one what what tracks with some of the other signings we've made previous to this that big potential and one we want to develop and and, and move on to the next level really yeah we talked a bit last week about that profile of player that you can develop but also is good enough to go into your team and and, mm. and do the job now is it is it difficult to find players who are sort of in that Goldilocks zone, just about right for you. Yeah, it's very difficult. Um, for sure it is. And, you know, like always, it, you, you need a real balance in a squad when you're building and you're trying to build a squad and you're building a team, you need a real balance to that. Um, and of course, while young potential players give you, um, give you a real 
uplift in, in the sense of where you could get them to. Sometimes you have to you have to bide some time with, with the younger ones. Um, and likewise, with senior ones, you probably know what you're getting. Um, development's probably less there. Um, so I think there's a real balance to be had, really. We've probably tended to go more on the on the younger ones, and that's worked pretty well. Um, and I'm sure that that philosophy will still stay in play now, really. Just incomings wise, there are two names that are going around today that I'll that I'll send you away. You can bat them back if you wish to. Yeah. Uh, Joe Worrell is being spoken about as as a potential addition at the sort of more experienced end of the market. Is is there anything in that? Is that something you would like to do? Yeah, there's something in that. There's a little something in that, really. So. We're hoping to try and try and do something there again. That's not been it's it's not close close. Um, there it, it, it's getting there, but certainly that's one which we would look to try and do if if we can. But again, until that's really signed, uh, it's not official at this present moment in time. But that centre half area clearly somewhere you, you're still looking at. Yeah, well, we've lost we've lost a couple of players in that area as well, and it's probably an, an area certainly in the team that we need to we need to look at just in terms of. Um, squad depth and in terms of what we're going to need this year so um, yeah that's certainly an area we're looking at and the, the second name that's been heavily linked with you today is Mikey Johnston from, from Celtic is is there anything to report on that one no nothing to report on that one I'm done promise <laughs> um, actual football yeah clearly you'll be very happy with the way that you've started the season when your squad is a little bit in flux, as, we, as we've discussed, and things are changing, how satisfying is it? I think six of your squad have scored this season already, and you've mm. only played two games. How, mm. how good a position is that to be in? We're in a very good position, of course. Um, we've got off to a v really good start. Um, do I see the team improving? Do I see the team where I want us to be? No, of course not. And I suppose that's even more positive, really, because... At this present moment, and while we've obviously got off to a very good start, scored scored a, a few goals, and um, there's still large parts of us at this present moment in time which we need to improve and get better at, really. So, um, yeah, I, I think like always, a real positive about the start of what we had. Certainly, like you said, suggested there, the players will have obviously contributed and scored goals for us. That's been widely spread across the team as well. So, um, yes, it's, um, we're excited at this present moment in time. We need to keep pushing. We need to keep working. There's still a lot of work to do. Um, no, no more than the, the fixtures coming up, which are some tough fixtures. I, I know fans are excited because I've spoken to quite a lot of them who've said, you know, this has been something that's really energised us. How do you as a manager and a coach, how do you sort of balance that? You want to be excited, mm. but I suppose you can't get carried away because you've got to be the guy saying, don't get carried away. <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a fine balance to have because it, exactly that you need to be a bit of a realist. You need to see where you are as a team and understand the the experiences of what you had in terms of what the team I want us to look like. But look, at the end of the day, I can't sit here other than be positive and excited, and and the fans should be as well because, like like we said, it's been a very good start. It's two tough fixtures, certainly the first one as well, um, and we, we we've got off to the start we wanted really. So there's a balance, of course there is, and I think I've said it many a time now that this journey this year there's going to be some bumps in the road and that's just that's not me being pessimistic in any way that's just the cold hard facts of championship football and that's the cold hard facts of professional sport um but yeah we're at this present moment in time we're moving in the right direction on the subject of good starts Sunderland have done similarly not yeah. conceded a league goal in their two games so far mm. how formidable a prospect is it to go and face them in the stadium of light tough tough game obviously been there as a as a player as well this place 40,000 people will be in this stadium at the weekend um, got off to a really good start they're a very good side young side dynamic team new coaching who's done done very well so yeah we'll be under no illusions this weekend it's certainly what we're going to go up and face um, I think we faced that in the in the previous two fixtures as well two very good sides in that sense um, so we'll be prepared and ready for, for the weekend and, and what that's going to bring really just as a manager new to a club, an appreciation, if you can, of being, in Sunderland's case, a manager who's new to the country, mm. how hard is it to hit the ground running and start well when you're, you <clears> must <throat> feel like you're playing catch up all the time? <laughs> yeah, it's probably that well, I've experienced that probably in my last, my last job, really. So, you know, you go into, it's like a player, you go into a new football club, different culture, different environments in, in that sense. So, coach there's done done very well really well organized team well drilled team um and obviously the results have have shown that still early and i'm sure he's thinking exactly like me in that sense so they've had two very good results um but yeah they've done they've done very well and it is massively early days and 
although people in my profession tend to get carried away about these things, I'm trying not to. <laughs> a different kind of challenge being presented though, and a team that has started well, how, how good a test is that for your players mentally as much as anything? Yeah, it's a brilliant test. This is this early into, into where I sit or where I've been here, every every test what comes week in week out is a, is a good barometer for me to know exactly where we are i've been in now for six seven weeks and every weekend and every day in training i'm learning different things the weekend brings a different challenge to us and that challenge is obviously we've won two and 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 scored the, the amount of goals we scored there's a different challenge coming this weekend and again it will be great learning for me and me understanding each and, and every individual player wise so these are great experiences for me, certainly for learning and, and trying to develop this team, really. How well are you getting to know them as, as people, as much as footballers? Yeah, really well, really well. Obviously, been some time now, certainly the way I manage in terms of my management um, and, and how I how I go about things is, is, is vitally important. I get to know every single one of these players, build up a personal bond and, and understand the dynamics and understand how these players work and the different uh, personalities in the squad, which there are, that which there are. Um, so yeah, it, that that these are these are constant things that we're we're learning every day, really. And, and I'm just interested in how important sort of personality is, and having more than just the football element there. Having different people in your changing room who are different, different interests, different backgrounds, all that kind of thing. Are you a? It's got to be football, 365 days a yeah. year, 24 hours a day, guy or not? No, not really. At times I am. The most important thing sometimes in professional sport is exactly what you're talking about is, is is how you see things how you are as a character how you how you face certain issues um and of course it, every professional footballer can play football yeah, you know of course there's levels of course there is but only what what you really define in, in certain moments is is the human being in, in in them and that's why it's vitally important for me to find out that and you really only find that out one by being around them one by, by seeing them every day, one by speaking to them, one by seeing them in certain moments, what we're gonna be like when we've not been a goal down this year, what we're gonna be like, how's our reaction gonna be in them moments? How we how we gonna react in, in certain moments which we've not experienced? These are all things that that now default back from technical ability, that's just character in us and that's just who the person's, what he is and what he stands for really. So yeah, they're, they're vitally important in them moments really. And, and just finally for me, how do you release the pressure valve? How do you do it personally? If you can't do 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, hmm. how do you stop the football making your head explode? What are your outlets? Me personally? Yeah. Um, there ain't one. <laughs> there ain't many really, to be fair, because that's the nature of the job really. So yeah, pre pressure's pressure. Everyone's got pressure. Everyone who, anyone who's employed and goes to work, we all have our own pressures and that's part and parcel of it. And um, I enjoy that to be quite honest with you. So at this present moment in time, uh, there's a job to be done here and I'll invest every single ounce of me, every single minute of every day, what I need to, to try and make us successful this year. And uh, there won't be no stone go unturned to, to try and reach that goal of, of being successful. That's what I've done previously. I've, I've, I've come in knowing what sort of work and what, what I need to do and what I've done previously is to get where I needed to get to and get the job done. So, um, and it's all good. Is it more important for players then? to be able to yeah, park it. Yeah, it's more important for players, for sure, definitely. Um, and the intenseness of, of the, the game, what it is today is obviously very, very different. And uh, the, the outlets in terms of everything and the pressure around players, I think it is vitally important that they do switch off. And certainly when they leave these facilities, um, they can switch off. And, and obviously when they come in here, switch back on. But I think it's much more important for the players, yeah. Thank you.